everybody, welcome to the show. I am Jamie, and this is the best magicians you have never heard of. Hey, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I couldn't wait for this interview. I'm excited about this because uh, we're going to work on some stuff together and we're going to figure some shit out. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you got into magic? What do you love about magic? Uh, great question. Um, my background in magic is magic set as a kid. The thing where it starts really differentiating was uh, I started street performing. I discovered Gazo and street performers uh, when I was like 14. So I began gathering crowds on the oversized wooden sidewalks of old Sacramento, California. And uh, that's where I got my chops and started really understanding what it feels like to gather a crowd, hold a crowd, entertain a crowd and all of that stuff. Um, moved to the San Francisco Bay Area for college, continued doing magic the whole time. And that led to, you know, uh, corporate work, company work, private parties, trade show work, a residency at a small theater. And, uh, and then up until earlier this year, that's what I was doing. I was traveling the world doing trade shows and, and festival shows and, and that's how magic. So I'm probably, if you had to classify me, I'm probably a stand up comedy magician. Mostly I do a lot of walk around, but not so much close up stuff. And that's my background. That's what I do. Do you ever still take tr uh, tricks out to the street to work on them for your show? get feedback I don't i don't hardcore busk anymore san francisco is really tough because by the time they get to you like eight people have already asked them for money so it's really hard to break through that first barrier okay, okay. i do perform at pier 39 uh which is one of the it's essentially an outdoor mall and has a lot of people that go through there through there and they have a street performing program i say the air quotes because uh they're like a stage and there's seats and lighting and stuff but that's where I use to try out new material. And it is gather a crowd, pass a hat. But as soon as that show gets good, my show, uh, I break it and change things around so that I'm always working on something new. So, yeah, right. definitely still use a street-like environment to try out new stuff. In my mind, there's nothing more exciting, exhilarating, just walking up to a group of strangers and being able to uh, just totally destroy them they, they can't mm -hmm. think that you can see it in their eyes and they're so happy and you know they went home and told all their friends you should have seen what i saw and uh i mean if you take the name of this show the best magicians you've never heard of most people if you stop them on the street and ask them if they've seen a magician before they're gonna say not in person and they probably yeah. can't name more than just david copperfield and maybe david blaine and chris angel and that's it so all of us are magicians you've never heard of so that's always an interesting thing. Um, so if you had a favorite trick uh, that's not anything to do with the four aces, what would it be? <laughs> uh, that I perform or just favorite? Just Actually, favorite that you answer. love. The answer is probably any drink called for, um, particularly like the, um, the Jim Steinmeier's hospitality. It's funny, my parents are just moving and they found the old VHS of... Mm -hmm of of lance burton's special where he did that trick and this is probably the i did a lot of things out of theater growing up and but the one thing that solidified magic for me was that special and i i rewound that tape watching that trick of hundreds of times probably and th that effect is just so incredible i built one in high school uh and and did it i've done i've done the trick about four times because it's a lot of work and doesn't really, you know, it's complicated and hard to do. But man, I love that trick. And my buddy uh, uh, Andrew Evans, who's based here in San Francisco, does a fantastic version of that. So that's probably one of my favorite magic tricks. Welcome to Tips and Tricks with Ryan Kane, the show with one tip, one trick, and one Ryan Kane. Humans waste over three months of our lives just struggling to get keys on and off of keychains. That's almost as much time as we waste looking for our keys. And even more time than I spend looking up statistics. Here's a tip. Take your key, hold it parallel to the floor. Take your key ring, hold it perpendicular to the key. If you do that, then you can get the key to melt onto the key ring. Look. Watch the key, it'll actually melt all the way down to the bottom of the chain. I mean, just think about how much time this saves. Think about how frustrating that would normally be. 
but now you can just melt through the metal. So this will run us right into the perfect thing. Uh, you have this uh, open mic that you do for yes. people to come and practice things such as this, uh, where they can maybe get a knuckle buster out there and see what uh, people think of it, or even something they've been working on, they want to get into their routine. Uh, this is a good place for them to do it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about, uh, about that? Yeah, uh, back in June, I started the uh, Mostly Magicians virtual open mic, which happens every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, sign up start at three. And it's a, it's a safe space for magicians, but also any variety artist to polish up material. It could be something that you were just working on. It could be a, an older thing that you just want to try a new joke on. The set lengths are any for anywhere from a minute to 10 minutes. So if you just want to come on and just say one joke, I'll give you the space. And uh, also, if you want to do a longer thing, uh, 10 minutes is up to you. So I've built my entire new virtual show piece by piece. Mm -hmm. every week over this and i've had several other people do a similar thing so uh, there's a facebook group which the link will be in the show notes i'm sure that that can do that if you're interested in performing or interested in watching shows completely free it's a private zoom room that is uh i'm really concerned with with allowing people to performers to iterate and try whatever they want mm -hmm. but also have that be protected so i'm like the number one rule is don't steal ideas from each other. Don't steal jokes. Don't be like, oh my God, I really like that trick. I'm going to do it tomorrow. No, none of that. Uh, and we, we have a pretty good community uh, and, and regular audience members that come in too, because as much as it's fun to perform for magicians and magicians always have feedback, the best feedback is always audience members. Absolutely. Now I saw that the uh, open mic last week for the first time and uh, uh I had my radar on, radar on you, so I, that's how I came across it. And so I went last week, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And I think the best part about it was that this is stuff that these guys are working on. This isn't, mm -hmm. you know, this is new stuff, and uh, they're looking for advice. And uh, I thought it was great. I enjoyed the whole thing, and I had a good time. And uh, now that I got people wanting me to be a guest on this show, I have to come up with something. And I thought, you know what? your show would be a good place for me to, to pop in and try it out before I do it on my show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we have a core group of performers, but every week we have a couple new people and, and from all over the world. Uh, it's not just California performers. It's, I have performers from India and Australia and, and, and uh, the UK. It's, it's incredible how connected and I mean, we're doing this interview right now over, you know, yeah. hundreds of miles. And exactly. It's, exactly. It's you were on YouTube and you were looking for some magic to entertain you, something that you love to, to see. Um, what are you going to type into that search engine? It's a good question. I like watching as long of a set as possible. Like if possible, I will, I will watch your entire show just to see how did you open? How did you sustain? How did, you know, what was the theme? And then how did you end? Right. I love that. There's a book about, uh, it's just called magic shows. I forget the guy's, the guy's name who wrote it that's just a compilation of all these magicians magic shows that he'd seen and it's just the trick order of what happened i love that book to be like what what did paul daniels open with in you know 1982 or whatever i i love that type of stuff and because I, i'm very interested in structure hmm. of a show this harkens back to being a busker where I'm, yeah, what, what am I buying? What is this thing doing? What, where are people walking away? Where are people really into things? And when do I fall in love with the performer? Mm -hmm. uh, granted, those videos are few and far. They are very online. difficult to come across. Yes. Uh, even so if I can't find that, I, I want to watch a full set. I don't want to watch edited. I can't watch AGT because I don't like cutting to Heidi Klum. I don't care what Heidi Klum thinks about the trick. I just want to watch the routine. Mm -hmm. So Penn and Teller do a pretty good job about this. And that's what I like to watch, stand-up stuff. Do you have any experience in your magic career that was just crazy? Something that just went so awesome that it's a story that you like to tell? In awesome? Awesome, awesome or cool bad? That well, it could be either, really, but just something that really sticks at a big moment. <laughs> mm. um, this is mostly magi most magicians watch this show, right? Mostly, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I do a thing in my show where I make an audience member's license switch places with mine. Okay. Uh, it's a very big thing. And I've, I've had this hat and essentially I'm switching the license very early on uh, and then doing some stuff to, to 
it's a it's that's a cool trick. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had all sorts of situations happen where I hand them the license back, they notice it switched and whatever. Normally I give it to them, they put it in their pocket, and then like five minutes later, I do this trick and have them switch. And it's like it, it they believe that their license is in their pocket. I switched away earlier, right? Uh, and I've had I've had them put the pocket I've had all sorts of situations happen where I hand them the the license and like women don't have pockets so they'll put it in their bra or they'll just drop it or they'll set them on a table behind them or whatever that and that's even better right because oh my god they believe that their license is there I was doing this trick once and uh I had it was a woman on stage I borrow her license switch it hand it back to her and she and uh and she uh she turned i forget how it happens but her her partner her boyfriend in the audience came up and had her clutch and she hands the license to her oh, boyfriend geez, who yeah. puts it in the wallet in the clutch and holds onto it and legitimately didn't notice that it was switched That's... and i see this happen and i'm just keeping it on the corner of my eye while this is going on like has he noticed has he noticed has he no and i'm like he has no idea and so when i get to the part where i borrow so I, somebody else stands up and I have him, I, I pretend to take his, his license out and change it into hers. Yeah. They, they went nuts. Uh, that was, I'm getting chills just thinking about <laughs> how awesome that one was. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some four aces. Today we're going to do a little jam on uh, some four ace ideas. I'm going to yeah. let you lead. This is going to be uh, your your uh, workflow and my, uh, I'm going to improvise and add in. I'm going in kind of blind. I kind of know what you're doing, but yeah, figure it out. I got a deck of cards yeah. here. Yeah, so this is kind of new for, I don't generally jam with magicians much because much of my special like close-up repertoire is not, um, is not crazy innovative. It's mm. just fun and it has my personality on it. But this is an idea that I kind of jammed with for a while that I think might be interesting because it's actually dead simple, right. but it has a lot of applications. Uh, and it is just a simple um, discovery of the four aces. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty, sorry, I, I promised you guys the, uh, the aces. You know what, if we just do this, we can uh, get them to become the aces. Looks so right good. There. It's, it has no right to look as good as it does. Um, and so if you are following along at home, uh, this is pretty simple. And I should put them back in the right spot. Of You have the two aces on top. And you have your two. Uh, I use the jacks cause, just because they're so different. Uh, and it feels like much more of a miss than the kings. Um, right. But and don't use the ace of spades because you're about to frustration count. And if you don't know this move, if you throw a deck of cards and you just apply not even a lot of pressure, but just some loose pressure to the top, uh, the top and bottom, uh, the top and bottom cards will come out. You can also do this thing where you catch an extra card, which is undesirable. Don't do that for this. But you just want to throw it out and just have, and I'm doing it every time now. Look at that. Uh, every time. Look, I'm amazing. Here, let's <laughs> switch these and make sure I'm not uh, doing this wrong. Uh, you can, you'll, you'll just retain, um, the top and bottom card and you can do that from both hands. So you get this really simple four ace production if you do this. And then all I'm doing is I realized that if, if you, if, since you have this, you, you technically have, you know, the aces on top here, but you're set up to this, this really simple frustration count of showing four jacks, but you of course only have the, uh, the two. And then this sets you up to then switch them back. And if you alternate, they look like different moves and it looks like you transform both which, with only two and two. It's it's a pretty cool little thing. And, and this is the simplest, uh, the simplest application that I have for it uh, of just doing this as a, a, a discovery of, oh my, oh, I promised you aces. I promised you aces here. We'll uh, change those into the aces. And that does, that looks so good. The other one. It has no reason to look as good as it does. It also sets you up for an interesting thing of, of saying, look, I promised you the aces, so let's do this again. We'll bury the aces inside the pack, and uh, and then we'll uh, – we shouldn't snap there. That was bad. But we'll cut, and we can find another one, and then, you know, another ace. So that should be an ace, but whatever. There we go. Bam, all right. And uh, oh, yeah, there's going. I must have shuffled them. That's all right. So one thing we got to pay attention to – is that we yes. have to make sure not to flash those aces, right? So you got to yes. have to be perfectly square. They just have to look like that, right? 
and then yeah, they don't them. they don't need to be perfectly square. You just got to make sure the borders of the jacks aren't showcased, and that is the hardest thing. This is the thing I had to practice the most is 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 once you get into this position of making sure you push over to square these up. So I'm using my, my pinkies here in the back kind of as as the as the part that I can push up against. So I'm pushing back so that I'm lined up and then and then positioning them over. So they're roughly about here, right? Right. Uh, because that's you just can't have the the borders of the aces pop out. Right. Uh, is all you're trying to do. And you only have to do this twice and then you just show push off the top ones. The top ones are what's leaving, leaving you the jacks in the hand, show those and throw them on there. And you can do it either as two separate piles, uh, but I actually like doing this on, into one pile for a couple of reasons. So you show the jacks, you push both these into one, and then you show the next one as you go here. You need to unlace these now, but this actually helps with the squaring I found, because if you're just here and you pick them up, there's no reason you shouldn't just immediately go there. But if you're here and you say, look, actually, I promise you the aces, as I spread them and separate them again, that gives me, it's easier to square them back up to then do the uh, the other frustration count to showcase. If, if you, hold on, let me think about this for a second. If you show those, yeah. right, do the frustration, show those, right? Yeah. And they are piled like this. There's no reason why you can't just, like you would do in Elmsley, push over the whole pack and take the two yeah. out of the middle, right? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, that's even easier. That's even so, look, we've already proved it. Yeah, and then you're squared. Yeah, so that's, that's even idea. that's even better. Yeah, that's great. That's so, great. So and there's up, probably other. So have, I. You end up like this. Yeah. Right? And then it's just a standard Elmsley push. And you're yeah. perfectly square. You, you, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That's way better. There we go. There's a new one already. And I played around initially with other kind of, um, you know, I forget. I can't even remember what they they look like of show, of showing all the, the aces. And this, I kept showing people this, and they're like, "Now nah, that other frustration guy just looks better, and it's and more and cleaner and fair." It's it's an attitude thing that really sells this. Right. That 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 there's you know like look oh and then it's like i because i'm promising the aces right so it's like and that's how you cut the aces oh wait sorry no i promised you the aces tell you what we'll you know we'll just do this and we can transform them into the aces right it's the attitude that sells that's awesome them, yeah. that looks so good and then so there's there's a couple of cleanup ideas um the easiest one is to just is is just have the other two aces on the top mm -hmm. and then in the offbeat you know palm these off and then if you toss those on back, you'll end up with all four aces on top, uh, which works, but it's not particularly elegant. The more elegant way is to take this dirty situation and apply it into something more useful. Um, it, you know, and for me, that is, look, I promised you the four aces, so let's do that because that was a little bit different. And you're putting these bottom two cards deep in, mm -hmm. into the pack. Um, and these are actually the jacks. They believe these are the aces, but these are the jacks. Um, you thumb count two cards because again you have your aces on top. You put a third ace there, and then you and then you put the the next one there. And then if you kind of apply a little pressure, this really looks like they're buried. There's a significant difference between those cards, but they're actually just one card away from each other. Yeah, that's right? a nice. And I have lot. all four aces. If you see what this looks like, those are just right between the the four aces on top. But that's you can a square nice it up. Equipment. It's, yeah, it's just a simple thing. And then you can do, you know, whatever type of. Um... I like it. Okay. So, so far we've gone, we've got a four jack production, changed to the four aces. We have a, a nice cleanup there. Then yeah. the, the palm, the two cards off to pick up the other two aces. Yeah. So they're on, they're on top. Or the misplacement. The other thing you can do is if, if, if you have the other two aces on top and break, um, and if you scoop up here and turn over, you can get into uh, a really quick, that's the wrong way to do that, but if you do this, you're in a pretty easy kind of reset position of having two of your jacks and two aces there. Um, yeah, the this one is kind of a weird idea that I've, I've played around with of if you, um, you know, you cut one card there to do that. Um, this is a, Paul, uh, this is a, what is this move? I'm actually applying a different version of some uh, Danny Garcia um, things to shoot that, that card off the top is that just, there. 
Is that just the index? Yeah, but he's got this, uh, I forget, this is on like one of the old Danny Garcia project DVDs of like really adding torque to make it just shoot out. I just threw um, about five feet across the room. <laughs> yeah, it's really, he's, it's a fun little move. I don't know. Um, but then being able to split those cards, I think is just an interesting fast splits. And so all I've done is, is this was initially a double and you do that, that move that I learned from um, uh, 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 John, uh, John Armstrong. Everyone has their techniques that they're comfortable with when it comes to four ace productions. Mm -hmm. and so the, it really is a great place to demonstrate your own personality and how you look at an effect like that. Um, and I, I, yeah, that was a problem that you saw as like, oh, that's a better thing there too. But coming to groups of saying, okay, how do I do this specific thing can be really helpful. And having a circle of magicians that are well-educated and mm. knowledgeable and willing to give feedback is great. Yeah, I also think it's important to to find ways to iterate on your ideas really quickly, right? Like here's an idea and all I, I just put together this four ace thing to try out this like frustration system. And you can try that. So I'm a huge fan of taking an idea of like, for example, I was dealing with like a prediction thing using wingdings for a while. Mm. And I wanted, I had an idea for like my virtual show of I'm gonna do this word that's gonna feed back later on. But the first time I tried that, I just forced a card on Zoom using a literally a one-way force pack. Mm -hmm. And then I had already had everyone print out the queen of hearts and wingdings. And that was the first thing. Cause my question for the group, for the open mic was, was that worth it? Was that interesting? Was it worth you literally opening up word on your computer and like typing out wingdings? for Queen of Hearts, because if it's if it's impressive to them when it's something as, as, as stupid as a playing card, mm -hmm. I know that it's gonna be worth it when it's a word that actually matters. Okay, Ryan, here's your chance to plug yourself. What do you got going on in your world? What is happening? Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, again, the Most of Magicians virtual open mic happens every Wednesday. Um, the last Wednesday of each month is actually a showcase show, a ticketed show that we do in partnership with the um, the Forum Virtual Theater based out of Canada. So on the 28th, you can see that, see all of our good stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> they've been very, very excited um, to work with them. They've been fantastic. So uh, you get to come see that and see us not do tricks for the first time, but for the second time. So <laughs> yeah. Twice as good. Uh, and um, so that I do a, a, a YouTube, uh, Inst IGTV series called Tips and Tricks with Ryan Kane, where I show you one useful tip and one quick magic trick that I do. It's sometimes politically themed. Sometimes it's not. It's just a, it's essentially a way to keep myself sane. I figure if, <laughs> if Stephen Colbert and his writers can write 30 minutes of comedy every day, I can write 60 seconds. Yeah. And um, it's not every day, but it's about twice a week. I do one. So you can follow me on at Ryan Kane magic on Instagram or YouTube and Facebook and follow that. It's fun fun thing to share and then i also wrote a book called out of stock a magician's guide to writing your own lines um which is a a step-by-step -step process on how to replace stock lines in your show and along that route learn how to write and be more creative so i it's a systematic approach because when i was again my background is busking i started with mm. gazo and i did gazo's act for a long time because he sold it and i did all his lines but I started feeling very self-conscious about that. People come up, oh my God, you're so funny. I love your show. And I'm just like, these aren't my, this isn't my show. So uh, several years ago, I got really serious about going through and just getting rid of every stock line, like a line item out of my show. And now I've, I've, I've built a show that I can actually be proud of and a lot of comedy that I really enjoy. So this is that process. It's on Amazon. It's $16. The ebook is a buck. Um, so it was very, very affordable price to move. It's had some great, great reviews and uh, great feedback from the magic community. So I highly recommend it. If, and I wanted to write a book that taught magicians, essentially myself and working pros and anybody, how to, how to get rid of the stuff at speed. I'm not saying just stop doing your show. I'm saying do your show, but you should be getting rid of these. You should be getting rid of stock lines as you go. And this is again, step-by-step step how to do that. That is fantastic.
Okay, well, Ryan, I want to thank you for being on the show. I really had a good time. This is the first time I've actually jammed on the show and uh, going in blind, kind of just figuring it out. I think that was great. That was fun. Uh, so, yeah, it was fantastic. I, I think I really liked having you on the show. Um, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I think this is great. I love the title. I love the concept. So, Thanks, thanks. man. I uh, want to, everybody who is watching, I hope you enjoyed this and had a good time. If you got any value out of this, uh, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, this has been the best magicians you have never heard of with Ryan Kane, and now you've heard of them. <laughs>